Welcome to the Ecosystem Podcast. I'm Sash Mukherjee, Principal Analyst at Ecosystem. And today I'll be chatting with a very special ecosystem advisor, Alan Heskett. Alan brings to the team the voice of the CIO, having worked as one across multiple different industries and geographies. He speaks from a deep understanding of strategy and change management approaches. Welcome to the podcast, Alan. Thank you. So, Alan, you recently published a report on how digital and IT teams can manage their IT costs in the current crisis. Uh, Why has it become important today for these stakeholders to rethink how they can do more with less? Well, I think a bit of history first. Back in 1987, the US Army War College introduced the VUCA model to describe the world after the Cold War. VUCA, or volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity, is a model that provides us with some context around how we can look at our current and future situation. Um, It would be fair to say that COVID-19 has affected all four dimensions of that model. So COVID-19's early impact on almost all organisations has been to take a very close look at expenditure. Some have set an explicit cost reduction goal, but in others the imperative will be to reduce costs as much as possible. Right. Uh, So what have been the early reactions of CIOs and CTOs to COVID-19 from your experience? Let's have a look at the main actions um, that the ecosystem community have taken to manage their costs as a result of COVID-19. We've captured this in an ongoing ecosystem study on digital priorities and the new normal. Um, With the slowdown in economic activity and the new demands that COVID-19 has created, the conflict between aggressive cost control and implementing new requirements has really increased the difficulty of the tech leader's role. They're being asked to reduce costs and implement new capabilities at a much faster rate than previously. So the top three cost reduction actions identified by our respondents are to first reduce the IT headcount, particularly contractors. Second, stop project work by cancelling or postponing these discretionary activities. And third, reducing the IT budget in other areas. But at the same time, the physical distancing demands of the virus have increased the priority of adding remote working and e-commerce capabilities. Addressing cyber security risks have become a top priority as they've had to support people working from home in other distributed locations. Almost two in five organisations have implemented new digital customer engagement technologies and a similar number have implemented new remote working capabilities, all in the midst of the pandemic. COVID-19 has increased the volatility of the economy and the uncertainty of the business environment dramatically. And this will continue until methods of controlling COVID-19's impact are are available. And during this time, the pressure on tech leaders to manage their costs will remain high. So the ability to understand and control their cost structures will be critical. Right. Uh, So where do you suggest organizations start their journey towards cost management? these times? And they should start by understanding the outcome their organisation is targeting. Do they want to stop cash going out the door or do they want to improve its profit position? When I attended university, I briefly studied some accounting as part of my science degree. And one aphorism stuck with me over the years, cash is reality, profit is an illusion. Cash is measured as the money flowing into and out of an organisation while profit is calculated using a set of assumptions and asset valuations that will vary by company and local regulations. So cash is something that you can really measure quite accurately, and profit is something that will vary based on the assumptions that are being made. Reducing cash flows means spending less with external parties. Um, Almost all organisations have seen a reduction in income from operations, So the pressure is on the CIOs to reduce their expenses. To do this, they have to ration, reduce or remove some of the services without compromising their organization's ability to operate. If the organization needs to improve profits, they need to examine other operating expenses that affect the company's balance sheet. These expenses won't affect cash flows, but they will affect the organization's profits. CIOs may choose, for example, to capitalise more of their operational expenditures, 
perhaps including assets that I have previously expensed, such as mobile phones, to reduce the immediate impact on profits. But they cannot forget that they have to pay the bill in the future, and the more they capitalise now will normally mean they will have less discretion over their future budgets. In either case, they have to make sure they understand the objective of their company. Any cuts they have to make now will mean they have to ration, reduce or remove services that the user community are used to getting. If CIOs are not able to communicate the alignment of their cost reductions with the needed outcomes, their reputation within their organisation will be undermined. This is a difficult change to implement, so my advice is to make sure they communicate what they're doing so the users clearly understand why services are changing. Right. Uh, so from what you said, Alan, I got the feeling that the CIOs may not have a lot of flexibility in their cost management. So from your vast experience, do you think they actually do have some flexibility there? I like a lot of things, it depends. <laughs> so to be able to control costs aggressively, they'll need to understand where they can make changes, how long it's going to take them to make the change and how much it will cost. There are two aspects to costs that will help them get their understanding. Is the cost variable or fixed? And is the driver of the scale of cost internal or external? Fixed costs remain the same irrespective of business volumes or other activities. An example of an external driver of fixed costs will be set by the supply agreements with third parties for products and services. An internal driver of fixed cost would be the depreciation or amortization of fixed assets. Variable costs, on the other hand, change depending on the scale of the required inputs and outputs in your business. An external driver may be related to the number of customers visiting e-commerce sites or stores. An internal driver of variable cost may be related to the number of people the company employs that impacts the number of PCs and software licenses needed to operate. Internal variable costs are normally the first target for cost reductions as the driver of the scale of cost is controlled by the organisation. As our research shows, reducing the IT headcount was the immediate action that most reported that was most reported by respondents to our study. The use of contractors has been a particular target, normally because the cost of cancelling contracts is much lower than making permanent employees redundant. But there are three other segments of costs you need to look at, they should look at carefully. For example, the volume of customers purchasing from the organisation may have dropped. So CIOs will need to understand how their variable external costs are tracking. This may allow them to retain more of their capabilities while still reducing costs. CIOs are going to need to make hard choices to reduce their costs. If they understand the type, fixed or variable, and the driver, internal or external, they will be in a better position to deliver the outcome their organisation needs without compromising service more than necessary. Um, Alan, it would be a shame not to get your last words of wisdom for our tech buyer community before we let you go. So advice for our CIO community. We're probably still in the early days of impact caused by COVID-19. So CIOs are going to continue to face cost challenges over the coming months. They'll need to be sure they're aligned with their organisation's goals. These may change as time passes, so they should continue to focus on driving their costs as low as possible. And where they have discretion, directing the resources to activities that have a positive impact on customer outcomes. Their knowledge on how their organisation operates is held by their people. Reducing the number of people employed has again been the first reaction of a large number of organisations. CAOs need to make sure that they retain as much of this knowledge as possible, so look closely at other areas of cost savings. And don't forget that customer behaviour is an external driver of variable costs. CAOs don't control external drivers but they do need to monitor their impact on their costs. Reductions in this area may mean they can achieve the needed cost savings without losing organisational capabilities. And before finishing, there are some things I would recommend CIOs and CDOs keep in mind when they're looking at costs. Don't forget that removing costs really comes for free. Mm -hmm. 
they will need to understand these costs of change and factor it into their planning. And they're not going to get everything right. Every change involves risks of one kind or another. Doing a careful risk assessment before the starting the change is essential, and they must take any mitigating actions identified. It makes serving the organisation's customers their top priority. As usual in an IT or digital organisation, leaders are going to be asked to do more than they have resources to deliver. They need a mechanism to choose what to do. And focusing on actions that improve customer outcomes will help this decision making. And don't forget that their chief financial officer or equivalent will be an essential ally in this work. They have knowledge about company policies and financial regulations to which CIOs are going to need to conform. Um, Alan, thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure chatting with you and I'm sure our tech buyers benefited from this conversation. Thank you all for listening in. Uh, to read Alan's report, please log on to the ecosystem platform. Watch out for Alan's report, the one that he's planning to write next, based on the findings from the ecosystem COVID study, where he will be providing guidance to a tech buyer community on how their cost management initiatives should pivot during future crises. Till next time.